Hi folks, uh, today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts with you about um, something that's been discussed a bit on YouTube lately called antinatalism. Uh, it's also associated with a, another a similar idea called ethylism. And if you haven't heard of these things before, it's basically a position that death has more value than life. Uh, because uh, there's so much suffering in life and there's no suffering in death therefore death is the answer um, the antinatalists think that this should be achieved by not giving birth to any more beings um, but as far as I can tell there's another group of people who think that all life should uh, just be killed and put out of its misery basically um, now this is done. Oh, first of all, I'm going to talk about what I think is right about antinatalism or this particular way of thinking. And um, what's right about it is that we should treat life as a value equation. We should weigh up how much suffering there is, how much happiness or how much peace there is, and if the suffering far, far, far outweighs the peace, then um, there's nothing wrong with deciding that life should end. Um, this, you know, this is a purely rational decision. It doesn't mean that we should go around asking people whether they think they should live, uh, because, quite frankly, um, we don't always give people a right to do whatever they want to do. Uh, cr criminals we put into jail against their will if we judge them to be criminals uh, and it might be that we're all criminals if we are well then um, there should be consequences to our criminality so th these are valid questions that um, should be asked um, so let's examine the value equation uh, that's put forward by the antinatalists so um, First of all, we'll uh, draw some sort of a scales. Okay, there we go. Well, that's not quite right. Okay, so on um, this end, we've got happiness. Okay, so happiness to me means uh, peace and clarity of mind. That's happiness. Um, on the other end, which is far more significant, from the point of view of the antinatalists, is suffering much heavier. So um, the peace and the clarity is considered by the antinatalists to be invalid because they say that it's uh, all of it is is based on delusion. It's deluded uh, peace and clarity. So um, we don't even need to consider that. Okay. So uh, all we have left. Is the suffering um, so it's, it's a very simple solution isn't it there, there, where there's, there's all suffering there's no peace and clarity therefore uh, life has no value um, therefore it should all end the problem is uh, that this is wrong this is a, a, a wrong analysis why why is the peace and the clarity deluded? Now, you know, it's obvious that uh, much, much of the peace and clarity that people experience in life is a result of delusion, or it's a result of not thinking. Um, it might be a result of drugs, although I don't know how much clarity you'd get from drugs, and any peace you'd get would be temporary. Um, but it's definitely possible to experience peace and clarity without being deluded. So it comes down to a value judgment. Let's say um, some people experience a valid peace and clarity, but most beings experience suffering. Uh, does that mean that the the, uh, the mass of suffering outweighs the peace and clarity of a few? Do those people have no rights because of the 
the suffering of the many. And what about this suffering? Uh, is this suffering valid? I mean, if peace and clarity isn't valid because it's deluded, how much of the, uh, the suffering is deluded as well? What, 90% of it maybe? I mean, if 90% if of, of this is uh, deluded, then uh, maybe 90% of the suffering is deluded as well. Wouldn't surprise me. Now, another argument uh, the antinatalists use is to say that uh, even if some of this uh, peace and clarity isn't deluded, uh, ultimately it has no value. Um, now this is a value judgment that the antinatalists are making. Uh, so the people who are experiencing peace and clarity may indeed value what they're experiencing. Uh, it might be conducive to a purpose they have. For example, um, my purpose is um, wisdom. It's knowledge of the nature of reality and uh, trying to conform to reality, living in accordance with reality and being able to share that wisdom. I can't do that without peace and clarity of mind. Uh, so therefore I value it and um, I try to pr promote this. Who is the antinatalist to tell me that this has no ultimate value. Do, do their values um, trump mine? I don't think so. Uh, one argument they use um, is that need doesn't need to exist. In other words, we don't need to bring beings into the world. I'm, try I'm trying hard to, uh, you know, to, to, to give some kind of ration rationale to this. Uh, let's do it in two stages. Uh, let's say there's no life at all anywhere in the universe. Let's, uh, okay, that's case one. No life anywhere in the universe. Um, can we say that need doesn't need to exist in this case? Well, um, any kind of need at this stage would, wouldn't be a psychological need. Uh, all we would have is cause and effect. So if the universe has determined through, through the workings of cause and effect that life is going to arise, then... Um, need is going to come into existence and um, there is a need for uh, cause and effect to um, play out. So um, in this case this is false because determinism is a fact and uh, if, if need is going to evolve or come into existence uh, then it's going to through cause and effect. That's the case where life doesn't already exist. Okay, in the second case where life already exists and we're asking does need uh, need to exist? Or does, does need need to come into existence? So now the question is more of a psychological one, a psychological need. And uh, the fact is that this depends on a person's values. Um, people's needs vary depending on their values. Uh, in my case, I want to promote wisdom. Uh, if I'm going to promote wisdom, then uh, that can only be done through thinking beings. And uh, therefore, I need there to be thinking beings. And uh, if there's going to be thinking beings coming into existence, they're going to have needs. So... Um, there is a need for need to exist. I have that need. So, again, 
in the second case, this, is, this proves to be false. My need is uh, as valid or more valid than anybody else's need. The need of the antinatalist to end all life is invalid compared to my need to promote wisdom. Also, it has to be said that there's nothing inherently wrong with need. Need doesn't necessarily mean suffering. Suffering is something that's uh, a mental creation, and that mental creation doesn't have to happen.